I was working with Advanced Fiber Communication, lost my job in finance, and I had a mortgage and three boys and a wife to support. So I was desperate to find a job. It couldn't be in telecom because it just crashed. So I looked into one ads, and there was this opportunity at the Petaluma Zoo on the west side of Petaluma. Now, Petaluma is over 150 years old, so it was an old zoo, and it wasn't very big. So I, I said, I'm desperate. So I talked to the curator. He said, here's the opportunity, Brian. We don't have a lot of money, but we just lost our prize gorilla. So that's why the banana. And, and he says, what we need you to do is we don't, can't afford another one, so can you put this gorilla outfit on <laughs> and do some eight mannerisms, and we'll do a promotion. So after two weeks of eight mannerisms classes, I was ready to have a big promotion. 250 people on the west side of Petaluma showed up to see me. So I got into my routine. And people were clapping and throwing some peanuts at me, and I got so excited, I went up on the monkey bars and started doing a few revolutions, and they got really excited, So, and I, I lost my grip on one of the revolutions. I flew over the fence into the lion's den. And so I'm shaking my boots, God help me. And all of a sudden, I felt this paw on my back, and then I lost it. Help, get me out of here, I'm not really a gorilla. And then I heard this voice from behind me that said, be quiet, or we'll all lose our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I tell that story is because that's how humor is. That's how public speaking is. It's not about the outside. Because I wore a monkey suit, that didn't make me a gorilla. It's what I am on the inside. And if you can get to know yourself and be comfortable with yourself, then you can give a good speech. What is humor? Humor is not comedy. So it's the opposite of comedy. Comedy or wit. So wit tears down and humor builds up. So it's a distinction. Comedy also has no point at all. It's just to get laughs. Whereas humor is a spice to the meal. It's not the main dish. Whereas comedy is the main dish, right? So, if you think about it that way, you, you don't have to be a funny person to add humor to your speech. Anyone can add humor to your speech. Can you add spice to a meal to make it taste better? Yeah, and that's what humor is. So if you have that mindset, the pressure's kind of off. Let me give you an example of wit. A guy was a music critic, and he came to watch a young violinist at a concert, and so after the concert, the organizer came and asked him, well, how do you think he did? He says, you know, he reminds me of Beethoven. And the organizer says, Beethoven, he, he wasn't a violinist. He said, neither was that guy. <laughs> it's the same thing like Zsa Gabor. Some people said that she sounded like a man earlier in her career. She had kind of a man's voice. And so one reporter asked her in the interview, she said, does anyone uh, mistake you for being a man? And she says, no. Did they mistake you for being one? <laughs> see, that, that's wit. I mean, yeah, it's zing. But it, see, comedy is cruel. It hurts people. Mel Brooks said, tragedy is when I cut my finger with a, a paper cut. Comedy is when you fall down a manhole and die. I mean, it's true. I mean, it's brutal. Comedy is brutal. And so we don't want to resort to comedy. And that's why it's not joke lovers. I'm sorry, it's laugh, laugh lovers. It's adding that spice. So that's the difference, is building people up. And if you need to cut someone down, just cut yourself down. Basically, the first thing is know yourself. If you don't think of anything else, just know yourself and be comfortable with yourself. That's the ethos. The second thing is know your subjects or your spectators, your audience. There's emotional interaction that happens in between you and your audience. And you, that's pathos. And so you really need to know your audience. If you don't know your audience, here's what happens. It's like writing a love letter to whom it may concern. <laughs> you need to know your audience. John Lear, who gave this workshop back in, in fall, said it like this. He, he knew his audience. He said, on, on, on the way over here, I got a traffic ticket because I was in a hurry to come to the workshop. There was a cop right around the block of the Toastmaster conference, and he pulled me over and said, you know why I pulled you over, don't you? He said, yeah, I read a red light, but I was going to a Toastmaster conference, and I thought I had 30 seconds. <laughs> anyone but Toastmasters, right? you got to know your audience. Okay, so that's the second thing. And then we're going to go to the materials. And I got the things of the materials, but I, I kind of skipped over what the, I told you what the what of humor was. Does anybody have it down? What is the what of humor? What is humor? It's 
A spice. A spice. A spice. Okay, very good. So you lead people along and you switch it up. That's the technique of it. I wanted to talk about the why. I don't think I, I answered that one, right? I skipped over that. Does anybody know? I kind of alluded to it. And in fact, in the program material, I gave you a couple reasons why. But does anyone just from listening already want to tell me why? Add humor to your speech. Anybody? Yeah. You want more? You listen? It gets people's attention. Yeah, yeah it engages the audience. It engages the audience. Yes. Develops rapport. Well, yes, because when you can make someone laugh, you can. You know, it doesn't do this by. It releases attention. It releases attention immediately. It's like, how can you argue with somebody who just made you laugh? You can't. It's impossible to do that. There's a whole bunch of studies that show that it's, it makes you healthier to laugh. Yes. You know, kids laugh a lot more than adults do, and they're a lot healthier. It just makes you a healthier, healthier in life. <coughs> and people actually remember, they remember your speech when they laugh about it. Because people learn when they laugh. Whether or not you do this part, it's OK. But these are just some things that I give you as tool, your tool part, OK? So for example, element of surprise. So here's, how, here's an example of element of surprise. Do you ever wake up grumpy? No, I just let him sleep in. Okay, so you can change it up on him because humor, you're leading people along the path and then you switch it up on them really quickly, okay? But you've got to nail the punchline. You've got to be real succinct. You can't explain it. Whenever you explain humor, what happens? It's not funny. Okay? In fact, that's what I'm attempting to do. I'm trying to explain humor and it's not going to be that funny. Then they always say comedy happens in threes, triple, the triple, because basically the first two sets them up for the third singer. So that's leading people along this path, one, two, and they think that you're going for the third step, and then you switch it up on them, and that's what makes it funny. Do you know that people can hear and process words at 800 words a minute? Wow. Did you know that? Yeah. But most people speak only 150 to 200 words a minute. So we naturally go ahead of the speaker and think what's going to fill in the blank. We naturally do that. And humor takes advantage of that. Because we know you're going ahead of us. Whenever you complete the equation for them, explaining the joke, it's not funny. So you don't complete the joke for them. They complete it themselves. The only way to get good at humor, there's no easy way. It's simple. It's simple, but it's not easy. We believe in the five P's at... Toastmasters at AAA Talkers. And these are the five P's. Proper planning prevents poor performance. Really, it's only three P's. Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> there are two things in, in humor. There's two S's. It's surprise and superiority. I told you about the surprise. Superiority is, if, if it makes it look like you're the one that's superior than others, people won't like that. So if you let the audience feel superior to you, they like that. So if you're going to cut someone down, just cut yourself down. Okay, and I have some examples of that. Three husbands were sharing stories of how they got into an argument with their wives. The first one said, she threw me out of the bed. The second one said, she threw me out of the house. The third one said, well, my wife came crawling to me on her hands and knees. And the other guy said, well, what did she say? He said, well, she said, get out from under that bed and stand up like a man. <laughs> you see how that's a triple? The third one sets you up. All right, so, zinging. They told me they had three way to the gym, so I took some. Okay. Exaggeration. My wife told me she shaved the, the, uh, my shaved head would make me look younger, and she was right. Now I look like a baby. <laughs> okay, so it's self-deprecation. Okay. Implication. Grand Canyon guy. Does anyone want to try some of these? Anyone want to give it a try? Read it out loud to us? It's all about delivery, it's not about the words. Hey John, can you do uh, implication please? Grand Canyon guy said, it took millions of years to carve this. And the visitor replied, oh, was it a government project? <laughs> it's all the implication. You're so good at that, I'd like you to go and play on words, please. What, one hospital is drastically cutting costs by having patients make their own beds. Upon admittance, they hand them a toolbox and some wood. <laughs> Make their own give it. You know, see what I'm saying? So who wants to try the reverse? Anyone want to try that one? Ashley does. Ashley. Where's Ashley? Okay, Ashley, try the reverse. My wife gave her friend a clay pen. When you receive a thank you note, it read, This pen is just what we needed. I sit in it every afternoon and the kids can't get near me. <laughs> Leading you along and then you switch it on them. That's, that's just, it's just practice with that. I'm going to go with the last one. I got this one from Jim Gaffigan. He was my number one comedian on the back there. Watch him. He's a really clean, family friendly. All these ones, like I said, are family friendly. They don't have 
it's easy to be funny if you result, result to sex jokes. I mean, that's, that's so easy to do that, you know? But it's really hard to be humorous without resorting to that. And at Toastmaster, we're professional. We don't want to resort to that. It's crossing the line, okay? Uh, crossing the line by vulgarity or by hurting your audience. Don't do those two things. It's just going to hurt you. So the last one I get from Jim Gaffigan, he says this. I'm a vet. He always talks about food, right? I'm a vegetarian. It's a clarification. Well, I'm not a strict vegetarian. I eat beef and pork. It's just not fish. That's gross. <laughs> <laughs> reminds me of my big fat Greek wedding. You remember that? That one, that one is a vegetarian. She says, oh, you're a vegetarian. You don't like me? That's okay. We give you lamb. <laughs> Yesterday, I told my son he has to clean the bathroom toilet. So I help him by putting comet all over the toilet. I come back and there's still soap on it. He says, you put it on there. You clean it. Oh. Oh. Sometimes I use wine to cook. My wife could never let me in the kitchen if she was sober. Oh. Thank you for inviting me to show and tell. I came late. I remember the banana, but I forgot the monkey. Oh. This is the wine joke. Okay. I, I use wine with dinner. Well, actually, it's whining. I don't like to cook. But what I really want to know is, is there a path for that? Awesome! I'll just tell you one last thing is you don't have to be original. Now, I told you be yourself, right? But the way to learning about yourself and the way to be good is to look at the greats. So you can copy the greats. When, uh, we homeschooled all three of our boys. The oldest one just graduated at UCLA. When they were in first grade, they learned how to write cursive by just copying us. So you can copy someone at first that appeals to you, and then you wind up learning that craft, and then you can be on your own. It's okay to copy the greats at first. I believe this. This is a truth. Everyone looking, listening to me through video or through, through here, sitting here, everyone, by virtue of being made in the image of God, has exalted worth, potential, and value. Everyone.